This video is not from any investment advisor or any expert professional. This video is from a student's point of view and for educational purpose only. Now before starting on, let's assume that we have an infrastructure company which constructs a bridge at the cost of a thousand crores. This bridge is rather crucial for the region and cuts down the travelling time for trucks by over 10 hours. And for this service, the government allows the company to collect a toll of Rs 50 per trip from every truck that passes through. Now this thousand crores is the tough part and that's because it is difficult for many companies to put up such high sums of money and probably that's why most companies end up borrowing this money which adds a layer of unwanted complexities to the balance sheet. Anyways, let's continue with our assumption. Now this company borrows the money, constructs the bridge and is now expecting rupees 50 per trip which means that it's going to take many many years before the company recoups the capital pays off the loan and makes some profit out of this project and this is where an infrastructure investment trust comes in now let's have a look at what is infrastructure investment trust an infrastructure investment trust is like a mutual fund which enables direct investment of small amounts of money from possible individual or institutional investors in infrastructure to earn a small portion of the income as return, in which can be treated as the modified version of rates designed to suit the specific circumstances of the infrastructure sector. There are three types of invites on the basis of number of investors and the amount to be invested. Firstly, there are publicly offered listed invest, which is listed in the stock exchange and actively traded. Minimum investor for IPO launch is minimum 20 investors. Second one is privately placed listed invests, which consist of minimum 5 to a maximum of 1000 investors. The investment amount should be from raise 1 crore to 25 crore and the trading lot should be from raise 1 crore to 2 crore. Last one is privately placed unlisted invests where there should be a thousand investors and the minimum investment should be of raise 1 crore. There are different investment sectors. As per the current SEBI regulations, five key types of invits are there depending upon the types of infrastructures. Those are energy such as power generation and distribution, then transport and logistics such as operating highways and toll roads, then communication as example optical fiber networks and telecom towers social and commercial infrastructures for example parks and lastly the water and sanitization such as irrigation network so let's try and understand how an invit works there are three types of investor who can participate in an invit they are individuals institutions and companies invit creates a pool of funds from all these investors and then subsequently invest in various big ticket infrastructure projects such as solar and wind power, road and transport and power and telecom sector amongst others. Whatever revenue this project generate, they pass it on to the Invit and the Invit fund then pays back its investors as dividend. The internal mechanism of an Invit fund A sponsor entity sets up the Invid fund as a business trust and appoints the trustee body. A sponsor holds a minimum of 25% share in the Invid which is locked in for 3 years post is IPO. A trustee body is a separate entity than the sponsor which holds the Invid assets in its name. A trustee looks after all the statutory compliances, ensures timely payment of dividend to its investors. A trustee body also appoints an investment manager. It is also a separate entity. The investment manager looks for investment opportunities, makes investment decisions and does all the due diligence. In return is paid the asset management charges. 
a project manager is also appointed by the trustee body who works under the directive of the investment manager a project manager appraises the project in which investment to be made and oversees all the operations and management of the project investment can be done directly or via a special purpose vehicle which is a separate entity in itself an invit investment is governed by sebi regulations 2014 which lays down all the broader guidelines a invit has to be mandatorily set up as a trust not as company or any other entity it needs to be registered with sebi and listed on the stock exchange at least 80% of the total asset value needs to be invested in a completed infrastructure project and it will be locked in for 3 years the remaining 20% can be invested in the following projects such as under construction project the maximum cap on this is 10% bonds and debentures of an infrastructure company stocks of companies which is generating 80% of its revenue from infrastructure projects government securities liquid and money market instruments investment holdings can be through directly or via a special purpose vehicle holding in private public partnership projects such as airports highways bridges needs to be mandatorily done through sbp only investment in other invits is strictly not permitted in dividend related regulations sebi has clearly laid down some guidelines firstly the 90% of net income needs to be distributed as dividends and also the time lag between two dividends cannot be greater than 6 months 90% of the asset sale proceeds to be returned to the investor as return of capital or capital gains until and unless reinvestment is proposed to qualify for a initial public offer sebi has also mentioned some guidelines the total asset value of the invit fund needs to be more than 500 crores and 25% needs to be floated into the public offer so suppose it's a 1000 crore project minimum of 250 crores needs to be offered into the ipo sebi has amended the application amount and trading lot size effective from june 2021 now the minimum investment amount into an ipo can be between 10000 and 15000 this has been revised from 1 lakh rupees and the minimum trading lot size has been revised to just one unit it was previously 200 unit a lot ever make an investment decision without understanding the tax implications i will try to clarify the taxation on an invit fund so three types of return can be expected from an invit fund one interest income second dividend income third appreciation on invested capital or capital gains so let's try and understand taxation on dividend and interest income any dividend or interest income that you get from an invit is completely taxable as per your income tax lab rate this income has to be declared every year in your tax return under the header income from other sources so if you are in the higher tax bracket you might have to pay 30% tax on any dividend or interest that you receive from an invit There is a bit of fine print 
on the tax on dividend income if the spv entity avails concession on its corporate tax then the dividend is taxable in the hands of the investor but if the spv does not avail any tax concession then the dividend is completely tax free in the hands of the investor capital gains tax rule is applicable only if you sell your invit units if you have stayed invested in an invit for up to 3 years prior to the sale then short term capital gains is applicable the stcg tax rate is 15% on profits made by the sale of the invit unit if you hold your invit unit over 3 years before selling them long term capital gains or ltcg taxation is applicable the ltcg rate is 10% of long term gains exceeding over and above 1 lakh rupees in swot analysis of infrastructure investment trust strength includes higher yield that is in which typically provides a higher return of about 8 to 10% which is comparatively much more lucrative than other debt instruments secondly infrastructure boom that is the growth opportunity of the infrastructure sector is robust investment in infrastructure is therefore quite rewarding and thirdly it is professionally managed that is in which are managed by a qualified asset manager with expertise to manage such funds who will definitely generate higher alpha with low risk weakness includes uneven payout that is the fund is not obligated to pay a dividend systematically therefore no certainty of payout frequency secondly big initial investment although sebi has amended the minimum investment ticket size still it is problematic for small retail investors and lastly low liquidity that is due to trading in lots and also a low investor pool liquidity is an issue in this investment vehicle opportunity includes diversification that is in which provide an unique opportunity to diversify one's portfolio and enjoy the opportunities of infrastructure sector investment without the hassle of physically holding an infrastructure asset secondly regular income it provides the opportunity for a fixed income at a superior interest rate and thirdly capital appreciation as fund is also listed it provides the opportunity for fund value appreciation and finally threats include regulatory risk as it is a relatively new investment product the framework is still experimental so it may be susceptible to an adverse regulatory guideline which is not fund friendly secondly default risk if the underlying investment into the infrastructure project does not work out and if that fails the fund may suffer a crippling default risk and lastly inflation risk an increase in core inflation may impact investors appetite investor sentiment to invest in such a big ticket investment some of the examples of invits in india which are publicly listed are irb invit fund power grid infrastructure trust and indigrid trust invit other examples of invits which are privately listed are india infrastructure trust and national highways infra trust we have also compared the performance of the invit fund in the same aspects but different tenure first one is a year to date study where the steady growth is observed with an average of 35% and more return in last year for all of them similarly while we have analyzed the same for 5 years we have seen that india grid trust has returned around 50% irb invit has underperformed and has returned less than 40% while checking the performance in details 
it's found that the second one had issued a dividend on 28th January 2019 of rupees 68.27 per share. If we consider the same in reinvestment, ultimately both had performed in the same pattern. Be wondering, am I the right person to invest in an invit? To be honest, a invit is a fairly new investment option. Invit does add an interesting and relatively low flavor to a large diversified portfolio. It may be suitable for you if you have a lump sum corpus and looking to invest it to generate a steady income and also some appreciation on the capital is an added bonus, right? But you need to understand its ability to generate cash flow over a long run and the risk of the underlying assets. A recent study conducted by Crisel Rating Agency suggests that there is a potential to garner around 8 lakh crore of capital through invits for investing in India's infrastructure assets over the next 5 years. So the potential to garner returns is there in the market. So what will you do? Do share your thoughts on the comments below about what you think about an Invit fund. If you are the right candidate to invest into an Invit fund. That concludes our presentation on Infrastructure Investment Trust or Invits. I would like to congratulate my teammates listed on the screen on this project. We had a lot of fun working on this. Please do like, share and subscribe to our channel Finance Club for such interesting video related to finance. Thank you so much for watching.